although negative reinforcement plays an important role in maintaining people's behaviors, behavior therapists only occasionally use it as an intervention. Let's dive in now to negative reinforcement versus punishment. Equating negative reinforcement with punishment is a very common mistake. Punishment occurs when the consequences of a behavior decrease the likelihood that the person will repeat the behavior. Let me repeat that. Punishment occurs when the consequences of a behavior decrease the likelihood that the person will repeat the behavior. And the consequence is called a punisher. Thus, punishment has the opposite effect of negative reinforcement because punishment weakens rather than strengthens the behavior. Positive punishment involves presenting, or rather adding, an unpleasant or undesirable consequence. Negative punishment involves removing or subtracting a pleasant or desirable consequence. Punishment always decelerates the behavior, whether positive or negative. And likewise, punishments are defined by their ability to decelerate behaviors rather than their pleasantness or desirability for the client. However, we will assume that punishers are subjectively unpleasant or undesirable as they usually are for the client. To distinguish the difference between reinforcement and punishment and what is meant by positive and negative, you just have to remember two things. First, reinforcement involves strengthening or accelerating, and punishment involves weakening or decelerating the behavior. Second, for positive, think, quote unquote, a plus, like an addition sign. For negative, think, quote unquote, minus, or a subtraction sign. Now, there are four major types of positive reinforcers. Tangible reinforcers, social reinforcers, token reinforcers, and reinforcing activities. I want to take some time to go over the guidelines for administering reinforcers and fostering long-term maintenance. Behavior therapists have developed guidelines for administering reinforcers and fostering the long-term maintenance of target behaviors. The following are seven important guidelines. First, reinforcers should be contingent on the clients performing the target behavior. The reinforcer is administered only after the client has performed the target behavior. Providing a potential reinforcer before the client engages in the target behavior will not accelerate it. Second, the reinforcer should be administered immediately after the client performs the target behavior. Immediate reinforcement is more effective than delayed reinforcement, especially when the client is initially learning a target behavior. Third, reinforcers should be administered consistently. All of the people reinforcing the client's target behavior should use the same criteria for determining when a reinforcer should be administered and they should administer the reinforcers each time they are earned. Fourth, the client should be made aware that the reinforcer is a consequence of the target behavior. The simple way to do this is to tell the client the reason that the reinforcer is being administered. 
This makes the contingency between the target and the reinforcer explicit and helps the client remember the consequence, which is important because reinforcement affects the future performance of a behavior. Fifth, continuous reinforcement should be used initially, followed by intermediate reinforcement. Continuous reinforcement is optional for initially accelerating a target behavior, and intermediate reinforcement facilitates long-term maintenance, transfer, and generalization. Six, natural reinforcers should be used in therapy. Employing reinforcers that the client is likely to receive outside therapy also enhances transfer, generalization, and long-term maintenance. And seven, reinforcers should be kept potent. Reinforcers can lose their effectiveness with repeated use. Conversely, the more a client is deprived of a specific reinforcer, the greater is that reinforcer's potency. Reinforcement consistently has been effective in accelerating many different types of target behaviors for clients of all ages and intellect and physical capabilities. Behavior is maintained only if it is reinforced. Procedures for enhancing long-term maintenance as well as transfer and generalization employ natural reinforcers, self-reinforcement, natural reinforcing agents, and intermittent reinforcement.